Hey there Seekers, welcome back to Wild Lotus Tarot and to your weekly intuitive tarot reading. Just before we head to that, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who has joined me for the initiation, my immersive four week learn tarot journey. It's been incredible to um, get the amazing feedback so far and also to grow that community of like-minded souls um, learning tarot with me and because I want to continue growing that at the moment I'm really in a growth stage I have extended the special price through till the end of September so uh, the first link down below will take you to a page so you can find out everything you need to know about it um, the value is really great and I'm not just saying that because it's my course <laughs> I truly do believe that from from what I've seen so I would love to have you on board and keep in mind you can join at any time guys um, it's intended to be a four week journey but you can jump in at any time and if you want to take longer than four weeks because you're probably really busy just like me you can absolutely do that you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. Those links are down below as well. Uh, also, you'll find the link to my website should you want to arrange a personal reading or healing for yourself. I am available for those and would love to read for you. So I am wishing you so much love and magic for your week ahead. Let's head to your reading. Capricorn, this is your weekly intuitive tarot reading for September 13th through to the 19th. I hope you're well Capricorn. Let's see what may be on the cards for you. Getting started with the Work Your Light Oracle here. I'll then be going to the Moonchild Tarot for a lead tarot energy and today I'm using the Rider Waite and Star Child Tarot for the tarot positions. Okay, first one out is don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So you might be doing this in a few different ways. Sometimes it's just by not sharing your truth, not speaking up because, you know, you don't want to be different or be the odd one out or, you know, shake the boat or something like that. Sometimes um, people downplay their talents and skills. You know, they don't want to shine bright or be, be seen or show other people up. How are you dimming your light to fit in? And how can you be all of who you are and express all of your magic? Keepers of the earth, you are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Well, I believe that we all have angel spirits guides and that they are always communicating with us and uh, sharing guidance with us as well. So just keep in mind that they do communicate in the very subtle ways, right? Like the angel numbers, you know, finding feathers, uh, the song that comes on that just speaks to you at the right moment with its lyrics. So if we're not tuned in and we're rushing around, then we will often miss it. Signs from spirit aren't often, you know, like the tower moments. They can be. So we need to tune in so that we can, we can really see and feel the magic that is happening all the time around us. Okay, Capricorn, let's go to your lead tarot energy. Getting one card here. That one is jumping. All right. We've got the five of cups. Okay. Yeah, look, this isn't an, an energy of kind of dimming your light, definitely. Um, it can be because you've had a string of past disappointments or things that haven't worked out for you, and slowly but surely it's kind of dampened your light because you almost are approaching life with an expectation that your expectations won't be met, that opportunities won't come your way, or things just won't, um, you know, they, they won't happen for you, or they'll, they'll be sabotaged in some way. That kind of mentality holds you in a sense of lower vibration. It can even be negativity or depression for some of you. And when we're in that state, we're pretty much a block, right? We're a block for high vibration high vibrational energy so if we want to be open and attract and magnetize opportunities we need to take off that cloak of darkness we need to you know shine our bright our light brighter so that we are attracting there are opportunities waiting for you right behind you it's time to raise your vibration and be a match for them with the fives, number five in uh, tarot, it's the midpoint between the one, the beginning, and the ten, the outcome, the result. I always say it's the decisions that you make when the fives come up in your reading that determine what ten you arrive at. Do you want to arrive at the ten of swords or ten of wands? Painful, hard, ending, stress, and tension. 
Or do you want to arrive at the Ten of Cups or Ten of Pentacles? You know, abundance, happiness, fulfillment. So make sure that you choose wisely at the moment. Seven of Cups, yeah, and that is in your Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Recent past the Seven of Cups, I see that there is, you know, confusion here. Confusion and, yeah, okay, current or focus energy, Two of Wands, that's what I like to see. Making plans to broaden your horizons, to get out there. And the star, beautiful energy, that is Aquarian energy for me. And I got the beautiful Six of Cups. That is a high vibrational energy right there. And the star is not being afraid to shine bright, right? You know, using all your skills, skills and talents, being seen, being vulnerable. What have we got here? We've got the Knight of Cups and the Three of Cups. Okay. Two of Swords. So there was a genuine crossroads energy here for you. I've got the three of pentacles. The nine of cups. Love it. Bottom of the deck is the eight of swords. Okay, so Capricorn, you're sitting in the Five of Cups. It can be guilt, it can be shame, it's disappointment, it's sorrow, it's sadness. And we've also got the Eight of Swords on your deeper past side as well. And the Eight of Swords is also a feeling of entrapment, um, not really being able to move forward. But specifically, it's, it's through the mind, the trappings that, are, that exist only in your mind or that you've created mentally. So this can be, you know, that feeling of sadness, that feeling of overthinking, overanalyzing, you know, the anxiety, all those kinds of, uh, of thoughts that really can keep you bound. And there is a sense of it actually uh, shutting down your intuition as well. And maybe those keepers of the earth, your angel spirits guides are trying to lead you and guide you here, but you're too wrapped up in the mind to even really, uh, you know, hear, feel those, those messages, that's what I'm seeing here. So it's really time to become very present, you know, as they say, the, the past is the thief of the present because if you are thinking about the past, you're attached to the past, you're still sending energy to the past, you are not in the present moment where you're going to, um, you know, to find and, and identify new opportunities. We've got the Knight of Cups, Seven of Cups, and Three of Cups. You've got the Nine of Cups, you've got the Six of Cups. <laughs> so when I um, teach tarot, I, you know, I teach to scan for the dom dominant suit as to what the real theme of the reading is, that and the Major Arcana. We've got Cups, and Cups is all about uh, you know, feelings, emotions, um, happiness, fulfillment, and contentment. So I'm kind of feeling that that is what we're really seeking here, and I've I really feel that there has been um, some disappointments in the past that have really made you think that, or maybe it's just not possible for me. And every time, you know, somebody comes in to connect with you, because I am feeling like probably more of a romantic context here, um, you know, there is the sense of of being being shut off for, from it or expecting more disappointment. But somebody may have come in in the recent past as this Knight of Cups. It could be a water sign person, maybe a Pisces, who really wants to, to connect with you. And I feel like it's worth giving a shot because I'm looking at the Six of Cups at the end of the reading and it's kind of like the, the cups, cups that grow and flourish. But you are in this real uh, confusion energy about this and about them. Um, you know, maybe feeling a bit overwhelmed, you know, starting to run those scripts and stories again. And I think it's in the past because you've been dealing with people who have really dangled the carrot or have made hollow promises to you and things haven't really materialized. In the past, you might have attracted people that, you know, it all looked good on the outside and all the right words were said and, and all the right promises were made, but it really just never materialized and there was no follow through. And I think that's the sadness or the disappointment that you're holding on to. And that's the entrapment of, I don't want to fall into that same, same trap here. There could have also been third party energies for some of you as well. I've got the three of cups here, but also the cards are saying, well, 
it may be just time to consider, you know, planting new seeds here um, because the Three of Cups can be an energy of, you know, planting seeds with the new op opportunities that come in so that they do bloom, grow and flourish. There goes that Five of Cups again. Bloom, grow and flourish. So I'm seeing that this is worth investing in. And guys, this is not limited to romantic love. This can actually be the Knight of Cups, somebody that's offering you um, a new beginning in the work context as well that has the opportunity to make you feel you know, really happy as well and something that you can use your your star qualities and talents and, and just you know shine your light and that's what I'm really feeling here. So I feel like there's been an offer, there's been an opportunity, this old, the old past fears are coming up and you're going, okay, um, you know, feeling overwhelmed, don't know what to do here. Current or focused energy is you really showing up Capricorn at the crossroads, weighing it up, not sure what to do. And the cards are saying, follow your intuition, but also fact and logic. You know, what are the actual facts here? What do you know? What are the pros? Not, what are the cons? But we don't want to make a decision about from an emotional place because they can be made from triggers, from reactions, from the past hurts, right? And they can also blind us in a situation so we can't really see which way to go. So I see you really wanting to go for it here and really wanting to broaden those horizons, get out there, you know, have the sense of freedom, you know, really move beyond those limitations here and just maybe you're one action away from, from doing that. Some of you might need to relocate uh, to take up on this opportunity with this person, with this job, with this love, whatever it is for you. And you're kind of in your comfort zone now going, mm, do I, don't I, oh, but it hasn't worked out in the past. So why will it this time? And it plays in your head and creates that confusion. So it's a time for clarity and it's a time for feeling into it rather than thinking <laughs> into it. Otherwise, you know, you're really just going to go around in that circle is what I'm feeling. Now, the Three of Pentacles here is interesting. In this context, I really feel that what that's saying is that what you've hoped, dreamed, and wished for is starting to come true. You might have been pl like planning or manifesting this for a while. Three is the number of the Empress and the Major Arcana. So it really says that what you have tried to manifest is slowly but surely coming true here. And you are potentially going to achieve your wishes. Now, these two cards, guys, we have the Divine Wish Fulfillment card and the Earthly Wish Fulfillment card. So this is totally like manifestation, becoming reality, energy, happiness, joy, satisfaction. And it all depends on you, you know, stepping into your vulnerability here, tipping out the emotions of the past and going, you know what, I'm going to approach this situation from a completely different um, place. From a, from a grounded place, from a place of grounded energy, from a healed place. And I'm actually going to just be guided into it. And when we do that, we say goodbye to the black cloak. And you can see that we're now open to new opportunities. You can see the new opportunities. And I really feel that it's your time to receive. And that opportunity that the Knight of Cups is offering you has the potential to, to grow and flourish, uh, become abundant, move you into a place of balance and joy and harmony, harmony. But it all depends on are you ready to kind of go beyond your comfort zone. So I'm seeing that don't dim to fit in is like before you might have been just like, oh, no, I'm just not even going to bother. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to stay in my shell. Um, you know, it's not worth the hurt or the pain, but this could be the time that you go, you know what, I'm going to step into that vulnerability. I've got nothing to lose and, you know, I'm going to accept this offer. Or, hey, I might even like travel to meet this person or travel for this job and give it a go. And that's when, <laughs> because you just took a little bit of a leap, had a little bit of faith, you know, then things actually start materializing for you finally. And you've learned that karmic lesson and, you know, your, your deeper hopes, dreams and wishes can, can finally manifest. Capricorn, that's what I have for you. And I do hope you enjoyed this reading and that it gave you some guidance um, for the way forward. Do keep in mind it's a general reading for the um, 
is a general reading for all of you and it won't and can't resonate for everyone. Drop me a comment if you're called to share. I read them all and try to um, interact with you all over there as well. Helps me get to know you guys, connect with your energy and see what the collective themes are. It's been a pleasure to read your cards, Capricorn. I will see you back here for another one next week. Bye for now.